let's get started. So um, first of all, the message that we're talking about here today, what's really important is it's not any different than any other message for the last four years that we've been coming here. Uh, okay, a tough crowd. So um, it's really based on a very big idea and uh, an architecture, infrastructure play, which I've always thought security is. And there's many, many pieces to this puzzle that we've been building over the past five years. And, and as the years go by, these things start to materialize. So in order to build what we had to build, we had to think ahead about the, uh, um, the coming cloud and the uh, and IIoT and the edge architecture, as well as we had to build a factory that could give us a secure supply chain. Had to build a secure uh, certificate authority for key infrastructure, as well as a platform. So there's a lot of pieces to this puzzle. Um, of course, the big idea was open secure automation, and it's a very popular term now. And uh, open meaning tools and technologies that are based on standards, of course. A lot of this is, is very, very familiar to many people in the industry now, but it wasn't so familiar even three, four, five years ago as we started talking about it. So not only did we have to build these um, tools and build them on standards, but everything had to be cryptographically secure, authenticated to the users, to the applications, uh, to the networks. And then the other uh, disruptive idea that we've stuck through for the past four years is that our software model is a zero cost model. So that itself is big news when you're out in the industry and saying that there's no longer annual fees or um, you know, costs associated with users and, and uh, licenses and other things. So every piece of software we have is, is free. So it's quite, quite radical. Open also implies a litany of legacy and emergent communication protocols and standards uh, for both the field at the edge as well as um, the emerging and emergent standards for a control network or for SCADA. So all these things are supported, and we're going to talk some more about it. The built-in versus bolted-on, intrinsic versus extrinsic, that whole concept uh, that security just happens, very important to us. To make it work, you need a, a, a library of uh, embedded technologies. We've written a lot about it. I'm not going to spend time on it today. But again, I need to touch base on some of these things because it has to set the mind and the foundation for what we want to talk about today, just like every other time. So, no more on that. But the other really important thing is the infrastructure and the appliances that we had to build in partnership with Green Hills Integrity and some other companies in order to ensure that the, both the factory and when products leave the factory that the user could deploy and exploit the root of trust, the crypto keys and certificates that are built into the product. So this is a you know, very radical idea. So. These, uh, these appliances and this infrastructure is going to play an ever-increasingly important role in everything that we do. In the end, security just happens. Uh, you turn the product on, and it behaves like an intrinsically secure product. And there's no more thought, no more cost, no more complexity to the user. We are quite sure that we're way, way ahead of the curve on this. We've written over 100 patents. And most of them have been granted to us, so we're in pretty good shape. Now, uh, during the summer, we introduced a really cool product. Uh, it's an RTU, an edge device. It's taking all of the technologies, put it in the palm of your hand. It looks like this. We weren't ab quite able to release it last ARC, so we did release in the springtime. So think of this form factor, and you'll see, but that is something completely different, and that's what we're going to talk about. So this was a wild success for us. And uh, there's a bunch of interesting things we're going to do with it. Because this is yet another platform within a platform. And that's really important. We, just, we, we don't build products. We build platforms that allow products to spin out of it with much, much uh, less com uh, you know, invest investment in time and complexity. So people called it sort of the Swiss Army knife of automation, that OSA remote. So let's talk about that. So what's new this year? There's four fundamental things. A new security appliance, which is what you just saw in your hand. It's called the um, Open Secure Automation Proxy. And, uh, and we're going to spend a few slides on it. We've uh, released uh, integral support of a secure MQTT with Spark Plug B. And it's 
integrated into the controller, into the appliance, any of the appliance that's gonna to connect to the control network. Again, it's user selectable, so you can decide which protocol you need and then the system adapts to it. So this is the constant evolution to the edge. MQTT is going to play a very important role. It won't single-handedly solve all the problems, but you need lots of pieces for solving every puzzle. Role-based access control is uh, our next big thing from a software and functionality, and we'll talk a little bit about that. And then Wood Group Partnership. Uh, we've been expanding our relationship. Bridget Fitzpatrick is here from Wood Group. And, um, <clears throat> you know, we're, we're excited about that because we're the new kid on the block. We're a young company, and to be able to partner with international engineering companies that have their kind of footprint. I was just telling Bridget about a project that we're working on in Southern California, and uh, it could be our first major interaction with them to deliver several thousand PLCs, PLC replacements. So we're looking forward to that. So thank you, Wood. Okay, so the proxy, what is it? There's a lot of uh, devices out in the market, hardware, software, things like that, firewalls, etc. Virtually everyone's making one. In the last few years, it's interesting to see how many vendors are in, you know, in the common area that are you know, solving the problem. So this is different. What's different about it is that this device is built by Bedrock, meaning it has the Bedrock infrastructure built in. You see it's physical anti-tamper, technologically anti-tamper. It's hardened as, a, as an industrial device. It has industrial operating capabilities for temperature and environmental capabilities. And what it does is allows, you see there's multiple ports of small form factor pluggable, so there's multiple gigabit networks coming out of that device. And any one of those networks can be a down network for 10, 100, 1000 ethernet to industrial IP networks. Um, <clears throat> and above is an intrinsic, intrinsically secure MQTT or OPC UA network. And I may or may not have mentioned or forgot to mention DDS is coming this year. So, <clears throat> so there you have it. So it's almost that easy in that uh, the data mapping between a legacy um, database in a PLC and the tags that would be required in, in a uh, conventional SCADA system are automatically or automagically mapped by some very sophisticated software and device. Um, flexibility in the, in, the, in the link as well. An iRig B, you see that coaxial looking connector on the side. That allows um, connection to GPS satellite for external secure time. We could spend all 20 minutes talking about time and the impact of time on intrinsic security. It's one of the most important threat vectors. So this allows you to GPS synchronize all these devices in the field. It's really important. So uh, there you go. Now, any one of the ports also can be used as a local engineering port. So you have, in effect, a virtual private network uh, between a workstation and the conventional PLC network below it. So this allows, you know, uh, partitioning between an older and a newer network. So that's built in as well. And um, so the, the point of this is extreme ease of use. We think the whole instruction manual for this should fit on a napkin. Um, it's meant to be, uh, it's meant to deliver IT technologies uh, to the OT domain. So the uh, operations people can slap it on a wall, connect some PLC networks to it, connect a SCADA network up, and away you go. Did someone say I'm running out of time already? No? Okay. How am I doing for time? I got 10 minutes? Okay. Five minutes more and then five minutes for questions? Okay. The other really cool thing is in that device is our first uh, board which are, is using 64-bit quad-core computing. So this, that is a major leap. That is a bleeding edge silicon platform that uh, we think will give us another step up. So you bring that kind of computation to the edge, quad core, multi gigahertz, ARM Cortex with full 64 bit computing now sitting in the industrial space. So that uh, gives us um, a platform going forward for 
all kinds of groovy things. And that's real server class performance at the edge. <clears throat> now, the benefits is that this gives you real intelligent isolation, meaning that it's isolating what you need to isolate. It's designed really specifically around the, the uh, legacy network to the modern control network. Very, very simple. There's no configuration or maintenance, no firewall rules. It's an, an intrinsic whitelisting device. So you plug it in, start it up, nominal configuration, and you walk away, and that's it. If an engineer comes up to it to change a tag through a local port and is engineering away on it, that tag, any changes will automatically be propagated up to the SCADA network. So it's auto management, extremely simple. Last year, we introduced um, anomaly detection, uh, intrinsic to, the, to our products. So anomaly behavior analytics will be built into this box. And we've come up with some super cool magic that allows us to detect anomalies on the legacy network and uh, without any intelligence required on the network. So now we'll be able to see if people are acting or reacting on a legacy network, and that can be alarmed up through and propagated through a wide area network. As I said, it's called bedrock deep security. We were built this by design in partnership with a customer, a key customer, and uh, we expect a pretty decent deployment. We're excited about it. So uh, alternatives are you can air gap, data diodes, firewalls, other things. These things all have their, you know, their issues, and we think this is a highly simplified and very, very cost-effective approach. And again, there's one cost for it, software's built into it, and there's no perpetual maintenance fees and licensing fees and tag fees and all this complex BS. It's just not our model. It sits in a network just like this. How am I doing for time? <laughs> Holy mackerel. All right, so the other big thing is CyberShield, and uh, this is a really important thing for us. And uh, in 19, or 19, how old am I? 2017, we had CyberShield 2.0, which um, had a series of technologies. It was our stepping stone. 2018, we introduced CyberShield 3.0. You can read it. I'm not going to say it because I only have one minute now. And CyberShield 4.0 is this year. The important thing is that it's a firmware-based evolution for any system that's out there now, any system that's ever been out there, and any system in the future. It's a forward and backward compatible firmware intrinsic security model. So any customer can upgrade this for free. So in one year, we already have a major step function, and we, in, we embed a lot of the analytics that you see some vendors out there uh, you know, suggesting. That's a, that's a feature that's built in the product, and it's free. You just download it. And that's what we're going to do going forward. So here we have um, MQTT. But role-based access control, RBAC, this is a very important subject and a very important tool. This allows user-defined granularity on the roles and the privileges of any person, any application, any tool, anything. You can do anything you want and defined by the user. So now you have the ability to partition based on experience, based on roles, based on privileges. And this kind of capability is state-of-the-art uh, IT technologies. It's going to be built in and intrinsic to the system. And it, it's possible that we can do these things because the certificate authority, which is the key management public-private key infrastructure that makes it possible, the same way it makes it possible for you to do transactions, banking transactions, it's the same e-commerce technology, all of that We've been building it for years. It's built in, and it makes this work. And the keys, the certificates, the barrier to entry is built into the impenetrable hardware. So that means you can deploy role-based access in the system seamlessly. It'll support LDAP and other enterprise tools seamlessly integrate with it. This is going to be a major step forward for users. Again, it's free, all right? And it's our continual um, you know, push of convergence of OT and IT, and our continual convergence for pushing for advanced security. 
These will all be tied into biometrics and uh, third-party capabilities. So at any rate, I would just say this, you know, what tech wins from us and other people? Basically, follow the money. Look for technologies that improve life cycle cost, technologies that are really a convergence of the cloud and IIoT. These are big subject matters, but the core aspects of these things, when they're converged and when they're applied in the industrial market, they will win. And uh, we write about these things and build these things all the time. So thank you for your time. I think I'm only a minute or two over. Is that right? A few more minutes for questions. Please um, take a look. We've got three of our customers uh, doing presentations here, talking about the value of OSA and the experience with Bedrock. So feel free to join. Please come by our booth. It's packed with technology and cool stuff. It's just going to blow your mind. So questions? Who are you? Smart. <laughs> Smart guy in the front. No, that's our own. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, because no, because I don't know anymore. I'm just the CEO. The smart guys are over there. They'll tell you more. Come on. I spent hours on this. Question. Yes, sir. How about a few key points from your customer presentation since we all won't have time to attend all three? Bedrock is super cool. <laughs> I don't know. I haven't seen their presentations. I sort of have, but I, I would fake it and I'd do a bad job. Uh, the Tembler Petroleum one in particular is really interesting because that's a real live deployment of everything that's important right now with all of the digital diagnostics and remote access through public key exchange and a cloud and, you know, et cetera, et cetera. This is state-of-the-art oil and gas deployment. You'll see, you'll see a mass deployment of this massive across the U.S. oil and gas production because they're they're going to make sure that shale stays, becomes the cheapest oil for the next 100 years. So take a look at that. We also have a use case. <clears throat> Upstream, yes. Okay. Please come by. Thank you.